Webb Haymaker and Japanese exchange student Yoshi Hattori came to the wrong house looking for a Halloween party. When homeowner Rodney Pierce opened his door, he was armed and ready to defend his property. At the moment Rodney opened his door, Webb and Yoshi were still walking away in confusion. And the sound of the opening door seemed to further confuse Yoshi. He turned around and started moving back towards the door. Webb believes Yoshi did so because he thought the party was there after all. That's when Rodney saw him. And so, yeah, how she tried to explain to him by walking towards him that he was here for the party. But Yoshi's English was often unclear, and Rodney says he couldn't understand him. To me, it appeared to be a crazy person. This was not, you know, it was out to do harm. And looking back on it, what gave you that impression that uh, it could be a madman? Just the way he moved. It was uh, very strange. It wasn't something that you normally see people do. Rodney says Yoshi was moving erratically in a startling fashion. You saw him coming through the cars. What was going through your mind at this point? I was very upset, um, terrified. But there's an apparent contradiction in Rodney's portrait of Tara. During the trial, Rodney testified, he remembered Yoshi laughing. And even Bonnie testified that Yoshi, quote, looked like he was laughing or smiling. This was a 145 pound kid with a big smile on his face, wearing a white tuxedo. Does that sound like someone who is going to come around and do you harm? I knew he had a white, or appeared to be a white jacket on, is what I testified to. Other than knowing any more, I didn't, because I didn't have time. So I was focusing, trying, trying to see what was in his hand. This camera is what Yoshi had in his hand, but in the heat of the moment, Rodney feared it could be a gun. So he ordered Yoshi to freeze, but he didn't stop. Many believe that Yoshi, because of the language barrier, didn't understand what Rodney meant. We may have thought that uh, um, it was a Halloween prank, uh, that it was part of the party. But all that Rodney knew was that Yoshi was getting closer and closer. According to the estimate of the Louisiana State Police Crime Lab, he came within five feet of Rodney. This one piece of evidence had more impact on the jury's not guilty verdict than any other. He had made no attempt to stop, and he kept advancing. The adrenaline was so high in my, my system, it was just fear. Here, in those final chaotic moments, the tragedy exploded. Everyone seemed to be talking at once, yet no one was communicating. Rodney yelling, freeze. Yoshi saying in broken English, we're here for the party. And Webb calling desperately to Yoshi to come back, as he would tell the sheriff later on this horrifying night. Yeah, and he started start, start going to the man. And then I saw he had a gun. I go, Yoshi, no. Yoshi, come back. And Yoshi come back, and he started saying, and, and the man said, freeze. And Yoshi said, I'm here for the party. And then he, he came a little bit closer, and so the man shot him. And uh, I couldn't see any other alternative but to fire to stop this person. When Webb heard the gunshot, he went into a panic and ran next door, hysterically calling to someone to dial 911. Then he went to Yoshi's side. Was Yoshi still conscious when you returned? Well, he was moaning and crying. But I said, can you speak? And he said, yes. But, well, but he was in pain, obviously. A few minutes later, the ambulance arrived, but it was hopeless. Although Rodney thought he had shot Yoshi in the shoulder, he didn't. Yoshi died en route to the hospital. An autopsy later confirmed the fatal shot entered Yoshi's left chest near the heart. The 44 caliber slug ripped through his left lung, and Yoshi bled to death. His blood-drenched tuxedo shirt, part of his Halloween costume, is a haunting reminder of the violent ending to Yoshi's short life. When Dick and Holly heard the news, they rushed to the sheriff's station to be with their son, Webb. There was blood on his shirt and his hands. And he turns and he says, Mom, what happens when somebody gets shot in the chest like that? And I said, well, sometimes they make it, and sometimes they don't. And Yoshi didn't. And Webb took his head and his hands like this and went, oh, his poor mother, and started crying. What was your reaction? It felt like someone dropped the house on me. It was crushing. 
to find out that the person you thought was going to harm you really was just a 16-year-old out looking for a party. He's at the wrong house. It's bad enough that you, you happen to pull a gun on a, on a human being uh, to use it and to know that it may have been an innocent person and it actually was an innocent person. It, it has a terrible impact. Yet Rodney says he should never have been indicted, let alone forced to stand trial, since he regards Yoshi's death as a tragic accident. The power of the gun stopped them from talking, stopped them from ever asking Webb or Yoshi a question, and they felt, must have felt this terrible power. Had you had the opportunity to talk to him, the father, man to man, father who has lost a son, father who has a son, what would you have told him? But I'm sorry. I uh, wished I could bring him back. And Bonnie still obsesses about that moment when she told Rodney to get the gun. And if I wouldn't have said that, Rodney wouldn't have went through what he went through, and Yoshi would be here. Should you own a gun for self-defense? The debate between gun owners and gun control activists coming up when Justice Files continues.